Well, good morning, everybody. I just wanted to pick back up with where we left off last night in the in-depth report, where we talked about some of the satellite data and what it showed us about this upcoming pattern. So this was last night on, on Monday evening. We watched a series of storms kind of erupt right into this area. Some of those end up getting uh, warned as, as being severe. But as those storms kind of pressed into the early evening, just as the sun set here, a couple of the things just kind of caught my eye. First of all, we were watching high pressure clear things out over parts of the Mid-Atlantic and the Carolinas. And the other thing is we got a good look at what some of the snow looks like across the west. And this is important, especially in the west and the upper Midwest. It's underneath this cloud field here, but we are expecting a lot of this snow to be melting here pretty soon, especially in the northern plains of the United States. So later on today, take a look at what these winds are going to be doing. We've got very strong winds coming off of Montana, wrapping around a little low that's here in Alberta. But around that large area of high pressure, which has prompted the frost advisors for the Carolinas and Virginia this morning, uh, we do have on the back side of it very strong winds just ripping out of the south. And as they do this, they're going to carry some very warm temperatures to the north, but also the air in this region, as we know, is quite dry. We can see that by looking at today's all hazards weather map. So several areas today under kind of uh, either a hydrologic outlook for flooding or an outlook for, for fire. So let me show you what I mean. This whole region in through here, this is all hydrologic outlook for the risk of flooding due to snow melt. You then got red flag warnings here, fire weather watches that surround parts of Illinois and Indiana and states here nearby, here in uh, New England as well. Here's the frost advisory still in place this morning underneath that ridge of high pressure. And this will be going away. This will be the last of these we see for a while, possibly for the rest of the season. And uh, on the back side of it, though, we still have the avalanche warnings here. The flood watches out for um, Nevada as there is still going to be quite a bit of melting here. All right. So let's go look at that melting. I made these uh, maps for us earlier this week just to try to understand what the models are seeing in terms of snow melt. You're not going to see too much change in the west, but we're going to keep an eye right here. So again, this is looking at snow depth. So a forecast of this shows you how the snow depth changes. So as we play forward, all of that warmer air we're going to get through Wednesday into Thursday is just really shrinking the depth of the snow here uh, in parts of the upper Midwest and northern plains. But did you notice new snow is forming right here in parts of Montana? We'll take a closer look at how much, but you can see better than four inches in some places. Now going through the weekend into Friday, one of the most important things we saw in the models is that instead of now adding a lot of new snow to this out of this system we're going to talk about later this week, it now appears that that snow will be added into Ontario and then over the weekend possibly in the UP of Michigan and the northern parts of lower Michigan. We'll keep an eye on this. But this is what the snow depth change looks like all the way through the next 10 days. And that's more than half of that snow getting melted. Still going to be kind of some deep areas around the Red River Valley of the north, but a lot of the snow will be removed with these warmer temperatures. And this is what they look like. The latest forecast for today, we may crack 90 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in, in this part of Nebraska. And it's just interesting to see that that's warmer than the whole of the Gulf Coast. All right. So as we go from Tuesday into Wednesday, the biggest changes are in Montana. And this is the setup for this next system that rolls through here. A lot of cold air on this system rolling through the Pacific Northwest. And it moves into Montana on Thursday. And it will be cold enough to add snow into this area. Now, very sharp contrast on the eastern side of this with still very hot temperatures spreading here from parts of the upper Midwest, the Midwest into New England. And we get into Friday, and this is going to set up the zone over which we expect this elongated pressure trough to show up this weekend. It's just an elongated low on which we're going to watch showers and storms move east. The good news is the latest forecast is keeping it more mild in through here, which is going to push that snow line farther to the north into parts of Manitoba and Ontario. So this is Saturday's high temperatures getting into Sunday. The cooler air spreads east. Rebound happened already in the west, but the pattern is open and moving. And as a result of that, we're going to see pretty volatile temperatures over the, the next several uh, weeks. That's normal for spring. But we will continue to assess where that frost risk is going to be, and we'll talk about that in just a second here. But first, this map shows you over the next um, seven days, what the total accumulated growing degree days will be using the formula for corn, so base 50, max 86. So take a moment and pause this or, or bookmark this link here. It's just on my website. Actually, I have it linked on my website so you can check it out. That is uh, agweather.com, ag-wx.com. And uh, so be sure to have a look at that. What we're going to be watching, though, is this. Okay, let's let that reset. There is a broader wave that's coming through the northwest. This is what's forcing all that unsettled weather here in the northwest today and tomorrow. It will be added 
to by this piece right in through here that's going to sneak around the back side of this helping this wave to eject into the Rockies. So these two pieces are going to work together and come out in the planes very soon. So it looks like this. Here's that main wave. This is by tonight. And what you're going to notice is, see this right here? It doesn't look like much, does it? But as this trough sinks into Oregon, Nevada, and, and parts of Idaho, this is going to be the little kicker on the back side. That's going to come through. See it right there coming almost into the border of Washington and Oregon? And it's going to sweep around the base. So I'm watching this piece go here and this one go there. This is the one making the snow in Montana. This is the one that kicks off the broader system, which will start out from Colorado to Minnesota. So right there, okay? Now the good news is this trough is not deep. It's not cut off. It's going to move, but we need to see what it's going to do. So total precipitation over the next seven days. I almost, I almost ignored it. I apologize for that. Did you see also that there is, let's go back here, a wave right down here over Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. This is a part of that. We've been talking about it all week, this ridge that's going to be going over the top of this low. So this is a high over low setup setting up on Thursday. So I apologize for that. But that is the source of the rains you see here. And this high over low is going to produce a low that goes here toward the mid-Atlantic later this week. Now, if you're in between that and the systems I just talked about, we're going to have a large area in through here. I can just keep drawing here. That, that probably will be drier than normal, uh, much drier than normal, because we're going to get missed by this and only have light precipitation rolling through. So now let's see it all put together here. GFS left, European right. There's the trough pulling into the, uh, excuse me, the, the, the Pacific Northwest. That's the unsettled setup here for the Northwest over the next day and a half. Now what we're going to watch at the same time, high over low, so watch this coastal low show up as the first wave moves into Montana. Both the GFS and the European are putting that snow from Idaho into Montana here. We'll take a look at how much in a second. Here's the scattered showers and storms from the low setup over the southeast that moves into the mid-Atlantic by Friday evening. And this is the time when the second wave comes down into Colorado and sets up that pressure trough right in through here. Now you'll notice that the GFS is still aggressive on the snow on the backside. The European has knocked it out. It's putting it way up here in Manitoba and Ontario. But as we play this forward, this is Friday uh, night getting into Saturday morning, Saturday midday, Saturday evening. Both models kind of sweep a front through here, stretches from Texas all the way through the lower Mississippi River Valley, excuse me, eastern Texas through the lower Mississippi River Valley. And then that spreads on off to the north and east. What I'll be watching for early next week is two things. The extent of the colder air on the back side of this and how far to the south the frost line makes it. And then what we've got in terms of snow sweeping through parts of like Lake Huron, maybe northern Lake Michigan uh, and Lake Superior. So Superior, Michigan and Huron. All right. So let's take a look at a couple of the snowfall total maps. Let's blow that up. There we go. So here is the snow coming out on Thursday, Idaho, Montana, after adding snow to the Cascades. So remember, my color bar starts at four inches with the blues. So we could get some, you know, four to eight inches in this area. Playing this forward, the heaviest snows come up here into, out of Manitoba into Ontario. And then this weekend, spreading around into parts of, um, you know, Lake Superior, Michigan, and Huron. Could you get a little quick dusting of snow? It's possible out of this pattern. But if we take this out a week, that's what you got. Here's the GFS. And the biggest differences are here and here. The GFS much more aggressive on the backside of the first low. And then as it matures over the Great Lakes, bringing more snow into Wisconsin, Michigan, maybe Iowa. So again, European model, GFS. We're going to watch this all week long. From here, I want to show you the probability from the European model. So this is the chance of getting three inches. And what we see is the highest probability is here when you're not in the mountains and here. Notice that we don't see in the ensembles a high probability of getting a big event that dumps snow here or here like we saw in the GFS. So just want to point out that difference, okay? Uh, next, remember, into week two, we keep seeing the models wanting to do something where they try to increase precipitation in this whole region. And then as we approach that time period, it, it seems to fail. And we're so concerned about this right now because if I could make it happen, I would. I'd want this additional moisture, sorry, to be getting into this area to help relieve the drought. 
But as we talked about last night in the in-depth report, persistent troughing on the west has now increased the chances along the west coast for more precipitation, also increased the chances here in, in Montana getting into southern Saskatchewan, increased the chances in the upper Midwest. And that is showing up in all of the model forecasts, okay? Here's the European. See the same regions getting highlighted. This is a must-watch time period because of this. Over the last 30 days, this has been an area that's been extremely dry. So to see moisture getting in there is important. We know more snow is coming in here, but if we follow that up with more rain, we're going to have to start watching Montana very carefully for a lot of delays. Same thing for here and California, which is right now enjoying some dry time period and some sunshine. So we've got to watch this pattern shift into week two very carefully. To finish this up, let's talk about the temperature risk following the big system that comes out on Friday and moves over the Great Lakes Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We see that on Monday morning, the frost extent gets to about here. And we go from Monday morning into Tuesday morning. The European model still keeps it pretty far to the north. And then going into Wednesday morning, there we go. Now I'm just going to make a statement here that I will be watching for the risk of frost to get all the way as far south as this arrow that I'm talking about. I hope that I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm always amazed at how in the last ditch efforts for these lows to form or kind of occlude, they just have the ability to send some of that colder air farther south than anticipated. So I just want you to know that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to keep an eye out on this line for the potential for a frost. Okay. Overall, your temperature pattern, as we talked about, it's going to fluctuate a lot. Over the next 15 days, we'll see warmth that has been in the plains and in the central United States kind of move a bit. It'll reform in the central plains. And overall, most of this time period, the west keeps a cooler bias. There's a lot of cold water off the west coast, which is aiding in that cooler forecast here. Last couple things. We did have a kind of a feature article in today's report. The Bureau of Meteorology released their latest forecast for uh, the ocean temperatures in Nino region 3.4, again showing aggressively the development of an El Nino by summer, late summer. And it's great because they always compare their forecast to theirs being the, the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia to the Canadians, the Europeans, the Japanese, the French, the U.S., and the British. And if you notice, each of them is pulling in at least a degree C above normal by August, which would give us a moderate strength um, El Nino by late summer. Finally, in South America, we continue to see above average precipitation for most of Brazil's safrina crop. It's going to push the yields higher and it's going to push um, the production higher. We're drier in Rio Grande do Sul and Uruguay and along the Parna River Basin getting into Argentina. And that's kind of been an ongoing story for the South American uh, into their growing season. So we still have about another two months to watch here, but uh, this is the latest update we've got. Okay, talk to you again in the morning. Thanks.